Welcome back, my dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers. We were discussing before the break the topic of Tawheed. Chapter number one, the author said, at tawheed the oneness of Allah. So this is the title. At tawheed the oneness of Allah. And the author, rahimahullah, first of all, he puts the title. Then he brings and quotes the relevant proofs and evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah that supports that title. Are you following? The title, then he will bring the relevant proofs, evidence, ayah or hadith that fits under this title. Are you following? Now, he said, at tawheed And immediately, he said, Allah said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَى إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I, Allah, created not the jinns and men, except they should worship me alone. Worship me alone. Surah 51, Ayah 56. Now, this ayah, does it have any relevance to the title? Is it relevant to the title? Yes. Because Allah is saying, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا يَعْبُدُونَ And remember, the whole book is about the unity of ibadah, uluhiyya, tawheed al uluhiyya. So the ayah is very relevant to the chapter, to the title. Now, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ we know the jinn and the ins. Jinn, they are invisible creatures. We don't see them. And the ins, human beings. Is this clear? The jinn, they are from the root, jim and noon. This root, anything derived from this root, it means something invisible. Something what? Anything derived from this root, it means something you cannot see. That's why they are called jinn. They're called what? Jinn, because you cannot see them. We have Jannah. Jannah means what? Garden. Why it is called Jannah? The garden that has a lot of trees. So when you are inside, the one outside cannot see you. That's why it's called what? Jannah. One outside, because of the density, the many trees, he cannot see you inside. Are you following? We have Janine. Janine. What is the meaning of Janine? Embryo. A child in his mother's womb. The fetus. It's called Janine. Why we call it Janine? Because we cannot see that little baby. We have Junna. We have what? Junna. Junna means shield. You know the shield? In the past they would use the shield when they are fighting. It's called Junna. Why it's called Junna? Because it protects and you hide yourself behind, behind the shield and the sun. So that's why this root, Jim Noon, anything derived from it, it means something you cannot see. And the jinn, they are indeed uh, creatures. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. And they are Muslims and non-Muslims. Believers and non-believers. Surah Al-Jinn talks clearly about this. And you know that they came to the Prophet ﷺ, those who became Muslims, they came, a delegation came to Mecca and they met the Prophet ﷺ. It's called the delegation of Nasibayn. They came from Yemen. And the Prophet ﷺ, he spent the whole night with them. Because the message of the Prophet ﷺ is not only for us, mankind, it's also for the jinn. They came, he taught them the halal and the haram. The whole night, the Prophet ﷺ, he spent with them. The, even they asked him for food. Food for themselves and food for their animals. He said, your food will be any bone, any bone, the bone of any animal that when that animal was slaughtered, Allah's name was mentioned. So the bones, they will be full of flesh for them. So that will be their food. And for the animals, the droppings or the dung of the animals, that will be food for their riding beasts. So, and he was reading the Prophet ﷺ to them, Surah Al-Rahman, the whole night. And whenever the Prophet ﷺ would read 
فباي الاء ربكما تكذبان they will say we don't deny any of your blessings or our rab so the message is addressed to both the jinn and mankind and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us that the jinn are three types there are what three types al jinn thalathatu asnaf qism yatir wa qism ala shakli hayyat wa kilab wa qism yadhanuna wa yuqimuna ma'akum so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the jinn are three types and this hadith is authentic hadith in sunan sa'id bin mansur he said the jinn are three types one type they fly one type of jinn of what fly they fly second type they take the forms of snakes and dogs and the third type they dwell with you they live with you in your houses so we have three types of the jinn one type of the jinn they fly So if you see someone flying, who's carrying him? The jinn. Because no human being can fly. But when you disbelieve in Allah, then the jinn, they can help you and they can carry you and you can fly. Or you can walk on the water. That's why Imam Shafi'i said, Rahimahullah, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُ الرَّجُ الْيَطِيرُ فِي الْهَوَاءِ أَوْ يَمْشِ عَلَى الْمَاءِ فَلَا تُصَدِّقُوهُ حَتَّى تَعْرُضُوهُ عَلَى الْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ Imam Shafi'i said, If you see a man flying in the air or walking on the water, don't believe him until you check him according to Kitab and Sunnah. Is he following the Quran and Sunnah or not? If he is not, then the jinn are helping him. If he is following the Quran and Sunnah, that is what we call karama. Because the Sahaba, karama is minor miracle. The miracle is called mu'jizah. That is for prophets and messengers. For the saints or holy men or pious men or righteous men, it's called karama. Are you following? And we believe in the karama as Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. There are proof for the karama in the Quran and in the Sunnah. You know, in the Quran about Maryam alayhi salam. Kullama dakhala alayha Zakariya al mihraba wajada indaha rizqa. Surah Maryam. Every time Zakariya alayhi salam would visit Mary. He would find fruit, fruit of different season. The fruit of the winter in summer. Fruit of the summer in winter. How come? He said, this is from Allah. So this is a karama for Maryam alayhi salam, for Mary. When Allah told her to shake the palm tree when she was delivering. A palm tree, a group of strong men cannot shake it. True or not? And a woman is, is in the labor. She just delivered. And she was told to shake the palm tree. So that is a karama. Yes, you touch it, the rest were up. And the dates fell down. That is a karama for Maryam, alayhi salam. And in the sunnah we have many karamat. The uh, Imam al-Lalaka'i, volume number nine, one complete volume is just full of the karamat. The sahaba, they walked in the water. The whole army walked in the water. under the leadership of Al-Ala ibn al-Hadrami. But if the person is not following Kitab and Sunnah, and he's walking in the water, or flying, he's a non-Muslim flying, are you following? Or walking in the water, is he wali of Allah? No. The shayateen, they help him. That's why at the time of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, there was a man in Damascus, in Syria. There was a small hill, in the city and this man would jump from the top of the hill and he would land on the plain of the hill and the people would say he is a wali of Allah holy man he said yes he is a wali of the shaitan and he wrote a book al-furqan bayna awliya rahman wa awliya shaitan that's the reason why he wrote that book the criterion between Allah's awliya and the devil's awliya it is a beautiful book And you can download it, it's there on the net. The criterion between Allah's awliya and the devil's awliya. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he tells us now that the jinn are three types. One, they fly. So now we know that. The second type, they take different shapes or different forms. They have the ability to, because they can come in the form of a human being. You all you know the hadith of Abu Huraira, right? Abu Huraira, when 
Prophet ﷺ appointed Abu Huraira to guard at night the pile of date. And this thief came and was taking the date. And Abu Huraira caught him. He said, please Abu Huraira, forgive me. I have poor children and we don't have food. And I will not do it again. In the morning, he told the Prophet ﷺ, he told him, he lied to you. He's going to come back. And he came back. And Abu Huraira caught him. He gave the same excuse. This happened three times. The third time Abu Huraira said, I will not let you go. He said, Abu Huraira, I will teach you something. If you read it before you go to sleep, no devil, no shaitan come close to you. Ayatul Kursi. So who was that? Shaitan. So shaitan came in the form of a human being. So they had this ability. So here the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that they take the form of snakes or dogs. And the Prophet ﷺ specifically he mentioned the black dog. And when he was asked why the black dog, he said the black dog is a shaitan. That's why if you are praying and a black dog passes in front of you, you have to repeat your salah. You have to repeat your salah. If you have no sutra, you know sutra? Something raised above the ground. So if this dog passes between you and the sutra, you have to repeat your salah. And the third type of the jinn, the Prophet ﷺ said, they live with you in the toilets. That's why before you go to the toilet, what do you say? Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubith al khabaith The khubith the males and the khabaith, the females. So that's where the jinn live, in toilets. And the jinn always, they live in dirty places. So now we know the meaning of jinn, okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَى إِلَّا فَيَعْبَدُونَ He created jinn and mankind only to worship him alone. Okay, brothers and sisters, inshallah, we will continue chapter one in the coming episode. Till then, في أمان الله. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.